if it's one thing today's episode will be known for, I think it's by its love. Uh, we have uh, with us uh, a yeah, prominent uh, classical composer from uh, Denmark uh, that has a message to church leaders uh, of understanding and love, but it's also then uh, challenging us to be able to better uh, work together with the authority of other church leaders. He will be pointing to different uh, principles that we can follow in our decision-making to glorify God more fully. So I'm very, very excited to be sharing this episode with you today. So let's dive into it. There's a war in our churches between modern and traditional music. But the question is this, can we creatively integrate the best of both worlds to unify the body of Christ and glorify the Lord more fully? Join us on this podcast as Christians from various stands share their voice and come together to develop new creative arrangements and compositions that will help us to worship the Lord more fully and to empower evangelism. I'm Magnus Gautestad and welcome to SDG Music Radio. Welcome, welcome. We have now a new opportunity to come together to glorify God more fully by actually worshiping in the best of both worlds, to finding a way uh, where the church as a, as a whole can uh, be more holistic in its thinking to then uh, express and reflect all the attributes of God, and also to teach the whole Bible. So we are now uh, coming together to to see this from a bigger perspective. I think we all can have the um, uh, the temptations of stepping into man made traditions, and we want to really tune out and put first thing first. So we come together here in love. We have different people with different convictions. And I think one thing we need today, especially uh, as uh, believers, is to get out of just these echo chambers. Because as Jesus say, you know, what benefit do you have by only loving them, which is, you know, it's easy to love, right? So if we can come and, and create a, 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 an environment of respect and have these conversations, I really think that if you are in a modern church or in a more traditional church, there is actually something we can learn from each other to have uh, the most excellent music we can. And I, I think uh, God uh, is worthy of that. Now, uh, we have with us a very interesting guest here uh, today, Frederick Magle from Denmark. Uh, how are you today, Frederick? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you. It's a, uh, it's a great pleasure being here. Thank you for the invitation. Well, I'm glad that you appreciate it. Um, I sure do. And well, let's just jump into uh, an introduction here. Uh, so uh, Frederick Magli's music has united some of Denmark's biggest performing groups and celebrated some of the nation's most significant milestones. As a musician, he has worked across genres and styles, represented his country at international competitions, and forged an individual and distinctive path that remains unparalleled in Scandinavia. Born in the island of Falster, Magle was a child prodigy who was eight when his music performed in public for the first time. He was admitted to the Royal Danish Academy of Music a year early, the only student approved to major in both organ and composition. Grateful but restless, he left after a year and a half, eager to get to work in both capacities. Magle's relationship with, the, the, with Denmark's royal house was initiated with a work written to mark a visit by Queen Margrethe II and Prince Henrik to the composer's hometown on Falster Stube Kerbing. In 2017, Magle was appointed to his first official organist position at St. Paul Church in Copenhagen, where he is employed as both performer on organ and piano and composer. He writes music for the church lit liturgical cycle and presents regular improvisations on liturgical tune and themes on both instruments. And I could have gone on and on and on for the various things that Magla has done to also get his music out there, uh, you know, get the music out of the churches or just uh, out of the classical halls. He has been a part of a very interesting uh, hospital project I've seen where he has made a, a soothing music, beautiful music for those who, who are in a difficult time in their life there. Uh, I've seen he's been working uh, together both with hip-hop artists and included rock elements in some of his crossover projects. So he 
very, very interesting to read more about him. And you can do that on Muggle.dk. Muggle.dk. There you can also find sheet music and various ways of uh, seeing his music. And it's been a great encouragement for me to, to discover Frederick and now being able to get to know Frederick. And um, we're now going to jump into some questions about the challenges we have in the in yeah. the bigger body of Christ in in um, uh, in this life. Uh, so let's start with the challenging one, uh, uh, Frederick. I hope you're ready for that. What type of music gives glory to God, and what doesn't? Well, f- first of all, I would say that uh, in a way. Everything we do gives glory to God in that sense that our entire existence gives. But obviously, there are some music that perhaps gives more glory to God. And in a uh, uh, in a way that is uh, is better suited. I think I think God wants what is best for us as humans and as humans living together. So the type of music that would give the most glory to God, if I may say so, it's very, uh, it's very, you have to be very careful not to try to speak for God or uh, to, uh, to, uh, because we are humans after all, Mm. and the ways of God are indeed mysterious Mm. to us, but we can deduct that I would say music that, that is giving the most glory to God is the music that helps other people be receptive and other people experience uh, the spirituality, the, the, the beauty, and to give something. So, so music that gives a gift to our fellow, uh, our fellow human beings, that we can love them, that we can love our neighbor, uh, in the same way that we love that we can love God and we can love the neighbor in the same way we love ourselves. So I would say that music that uh, opens the way and show the truth and the way to our fellow humans, that would indeed be the music, whichever type of music it is, that would would, in my opinion, I would believe gave the greatest glory to God. Great, uh, clear principles to keep in mind there, going back to putting first thing first again about uh, love, uh, which sums up the whole Bible, if you want to put it in a word. Uh, So I think you have we have a good principle to to go from there. And that this is also um, seeing how we best can love other people, uh, which is made in his image. Uh, and by the, their existence, they are glor- glorifying him. That will point us in the right direction uh, of then to really understand what truly is best for them. Uh, and I would then say, uh, first and foremost, spiritually, because everything comes, or our whole life comes out of our heart, right? So, um, mm. so that I think that's something we can, when we go into decisions about music to make, music to choose for our services, all of that. If instead, if we don't go on autopilot or we just do what we feel, but we have some of these principles in mind while we do that, you know, we can we can kind of go like from outside and in when we are making these decisions with music relating to God, that might be something that can help us to think in the best way on how we can serve him and other people. Uh, I want to go to um, another question here, and that is for more specifically, you're like you, you are, have been a church leader within the music ministry for a long time in different ways. Uh, so for leaders of, of music in the churches, what is your main advice now for m- moving forward? I would say one important thing, one thing I may, that makes a difference, there are, of course, different ways and there are different approaches and, and different things that needs to be done to move forward. But one of the things is not to have a wall between the uh, the spiritual, the religious, the liturgical part of the service and the music. N- do consider the whole thing uh, connected. And I would see, I know there are probably some uh, uh, great musicians out there who, f- but who feel disconnected 
to the whole uh, to the uh, to the religion religious part to the spiritual part of the service and there can be many reasons i know it can also be difficult to work within because the church as an organization and i'm assuming this is the case all over the world there can be there can be a difference of opinions and the priest and the musical director organist are, can are not always on the same page but try to remain uh, uh, uh try to remain cons consider that it this music has to be part this is not just music that exists in a vacuum outside of the church service of the high mass of the of whatever service is is being done in the church the music is an integral part and even if you as a church leader may have issues with the priest and or the council or whatever it can be it's important to understand that the music is very much a part of the um what you call it, the the message the pre the 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 preaching the, the the gospel the 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 whole thing it cannot be seen in a vacuum so you have to work closely together with especially the priest hmm. um or the priests um there is no other way around it so if you have and i know that sometimes this can actually be very damaging inside the church there can be a lot of churches where there are differences between the musicians and the liturgical the clerical uh staff uh do what you can to solve it do what you can to solve it. Obviously, there are you can, there are things you may not be able to compromise on the quality of 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 what you do. We need to also ensure that whatever music we do, it's not autopilot. We have to strive for excellence, and if you have a difficulty striving for that excellence because you have different uh, difficulties with the, some of the other people in the church. Uh, maybe the priest could be that happens a lot. I don't have that, but I'm not talking from experience from talking to a lot of other organists and music directors and I'm just knowing what's going on in the um, in the church world, then remember that you are serving a higher cause and you're also serving the congregation and you are serving God. Mm. So remember that so that you can kind of like set uh, differences aside and you're striving for a higher goal. and mm. Hold yourself to it. Uh, strive for excellence, because uh, when you do your uttermost and even go beyond that, what you are doing is you're giving a gift to the congregation. And, and we talked about in the first time, the glory to God, also striving to do that extra. It makes a colossal difference. And I'm talking on uh, these. This is a message for the church uh, music directors and organists out there, mm. choir directors. Yeah, I I hear you. So you you have on on one side, if the music becomes only utilitarian, it's just for the use. It's just a vehicle to get things across. It's uh, that can be uh, um, something lacking there. So uh, one of the principles you're saying is to do that extra. You go. Know, go the extra mile in there uh, yeah. do more than is what is expected um and um and and you're also talking about that you know laying aside differences and i think when we say differences it's more of that subjective feeling of preferences uh, and yeah. then uh, we can then strive you know you from uh, toward higher goals and that is what we're trying to do on the show here that if you listen to a few of these episodes you'll start to get you know a, a little list of principles that we all can agree on and what i do believe is that if you come with them for example that one one that, that we've been talking about is that musicians should strive to um to teach the whole bible even some of the di difficult parts you know so we can and all of the different attributes of god so we can truly know him for who he is and not just focus on a little part of him and uh, and so if if you had some of these principles 
I'm sure you would be more effective if you then go to the preach, which has a, a heavy theological education, for example, which is very much in, uh, uh, you know, uh, he wants to guard the gospel. He wants to be sure that he's faithful to the word. If you mm. try to, to understand it from his perspective, that uh, then I think there will be a lot easier to to communicate, uh, you know, from the musician, which sometimes can have a bit more of an artistic or emotional type of personality. Not always, but at least uh, most musicians need to have that too to be able to really uh, understand and relate to people. Um, and of yeah. course, <laughs> priests also have that human uh, side developed, of course. And, and then when you have your Holy Spirit in you, then uh, of course you are uh, able to relate on a very profound level with, with people. Um, but the point is here that we are trying to understand the different church leaders and speak their language and come together on objective principles here. Yeah. Uh, and, and with that and experiencing that, we might be able to, to see that there is ways that are even more glorious than maybe our automatic subjective uh, you know, leanings. Uh, and, and I must say, going through a, a huge um, transformation in my life in terms of the music that I appreciate, you know, going basically from, you know, the most heavy metal possible as an 11 year old to just sitting and in awe of Bach uh, in my twenties, I, I would say that uh, uh, to be open to that, there are ways where you can come closer to God, to his presence, to be enriched as a person and all of this by learning uh, also about uh, in re deepening your theology and about who God is, that might also open up that, okay, I, I want to to experience the full richness of God. And, yeah. and some music can be good to, to express some parts of him, but maybe that style, just because it's, it's, it's so always, it usually sounds a lot of the same, you will maybe start to get a sense, okay, this is can be good for something, but if I'm really want to, to reflect the whole God, so people can really know him in his fullest. I need to be looking more, you know, widely on this or deeper on this. Yeah. Uh, so that's an encouragement that uh, got inspired to me here. Now, uh, I want to just ask you here, is there any difference in music for evangelism and music for for worship? And, and what I mean, there are some churches that are very seeker friendly that has a lot of the type of evangelism for unbelievers in their churches. Mm -hmm. But what I'm referring to here is in, in a more typical church service serving the congregation and then being out there in the world more as a, as a missional muse you know making spiritual songs to the world basically uh, do you have any principles of where the boundary is for that you know what, what maybe you make of your, your compositions that you wouldn't play on, on a sunday for example yes <clears throat> i would say there are definitely uh, compositions uh I don't think I've ever made a composition uh, that would be 100%, at least not uh, compositions of which are all my own, which I've not made in any collaborations. But if I take my own compositions, I don't think there's any compositions I've ever made that would be 100% inappropriate for uh, 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 to be played on a Sunday. But with that said... Uh, it is important to remember that the music has a function, uh, and and as you mentioned, it hasn't. It, it mustn't be too utilitarian. Uh, we have to strive for the excellent. We have to strive for the emotion, for the feeling also, and for the opening and for the belief and uh, in the music for the spirituality, or if if you wish. But uh, we also have to realize that that different music. But it's 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 actually very simple way to determine that that we also have the liturgical calendar uh, and we have to also say some music may have be good at this in this in this uh, in this in the trinity period in the late trinity period or perhaps obviously the obvious examples are of course easter and christmas where there are special music for that and we have the ascension and so on so forth but for the rest of the time some music will uh will be more suitable for other and sometimes i would say in my church i have a very close collaboration with the priest and the priest has uh i have an extended freedom but the priest also has 
extended freedom to say to me how which type of music that would be well suited for this particular also so the her sermon and the music i play are connected and mm. are not going in opposite directions and i think that's a very very useful mm. as i said the specifically the the issue between evang the evangelism and the worship well i i don't know i don't know if i'm actually i think there will always be uh, 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 worship in evangelism. And I also think I'm not really knowledgeable about the specific details in within music, what you would have, what, how you would distinguish these two things. But I think that every music that is evangelizing, that is spreading the good word, is, in effect, worship music in the sense that by doing God's work, we are in fact also worshiping God in that by doing that. Hmm. One minute break. No, no, not even yeah. a minute break. Sure. Sorry, I'm back here. That's okay. It was uh, again a beautiful, complete phrase by his own. Uh, I'll just comment quickly on that and we'll go just into the, the two, yeah. the, the last question, and then we'll close within three minutes. Um, Yes, you have a good point there. Then when making music uh, in, in more, for example, for unbelievers, more to connect with people on a certain level, remember that you are also worshiping then. It's not like you're, you're putting, all, you know, putting away the worship from for Sunday and then you step out and then you like put on this new hat. You, you are basically, uh, you know, God is everywhere and, and, being a Christian is not something we do on Sundays. So that type of sense of when you are making music for different purposes, if it's following a a, a church calendar or it's, it's to match a, a sermon or it is to really be able to reach the, the stone hearts, uh, remember that all that is a type of worship. You know, Luther talking about even making shoes is a, it's a type of worship. So we, we can take this principle into whatever music we make and to make sure that that sort of love and reverence is in it all. Uh, Frederick, how can Christians come together to make more beautiful music, both for modern and traditional churches? Do you have a quick quick take on that? Yes. <clears throat> I would say that, first of all, it's very important that uh, we do not assume ill intent. And by that, I mean we must we must go into it with the assumptions which i believe would be correct the vast majority of time that even though there are people who do music and experience music and try to worship uh, in a different way that they are being honest about it and that they do what they believe is best so we were had to meet them with a kind of like a compassion and 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 respect, and hopefully that respect will be mutual, and then we can, then we can. I know it sounds like it sounds even like cheesy of cliche, but we we have to find some kind of middle ground because if we are just standing on each our side and say we have no, this is the only right music for evangelism or for worship, or no, no, this is the only one. Then, then we will not get anywhere. We will not get anywhere. Well, we we see that in in politics and in the world in general. Uh, uh, the the tribalism that is taking place in in these days and age is uh, is not bringing anything forward, and certainly not the glory of God. Um, so we will have to kind of like I'm not saying we we don't have to compromise on our own values and our own music making, because we're not seeking a compromise. We are seeking an understanding and we are seeking making room for that. So what I would say is now there's a specific uh, place between you can, as, as I understand now, my church is a very traditional church. We do not have anything. It's not because we are against it, but it's simply not suits uh, our uh, 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 expression our uh, our liturgy. Uh, so we have primarily only what you would call what you would describe as classical music. 
Um, but I know there are a lot of churches that have worship music where they have worship bands and they have a different kind of like contemporary Christian music. And I think, um, and that that is uh, perfectly uh, uh, perfectly fine too. I think it's a very important that uh, there is a good good reason to say that the traditional classical music is a very broad term, I know, but what you could would call the traditional church music in a broad ter- in a broad sense still have its place, and it's important to keep that. And I think it's important. Uh, I would I would say. It's uh, there can be room for for both, but we have to not look at people who look at it differently as the enemies. And that's the same. That's the same thing I have when I, in in general, when I'm composing not just music for the church, but music in general. Also, the talk about the 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 contrast between the melodic and beautiful music, if you if if uh, uh, if you can use that term, and then contra versus the uh, modernistic music. It's important that we try not to see people who see things differently as enemies. Sometimes they can't be actually, of course, and sometimes it is inevitable. But it is very important that we, and I believe also as Christians, do not go into the world seeing all enemies around us and seeing everyone and who, who thinks differently and who does, does things differently. And then... We have to just make sure that what, and I'm not, this is not to say that uh, I know that church leaders and church musicians, church music directors are doing colossal work and really going above and beyond. But this is also what we need to do. We need to make sure that our expression of music is the very best it can be. And we need to reach out. We need to, we need to, and this is important. We need to feel the music ourselves. We need to feel uh, the. We need to feel the what the music can do to others in ourselves. We not, must not be cynical and all theoretical about it, and just because then it just becomes then it just becomes uh, 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 going through the motions. We need to continue to feel the music in ourselves, and then I believe, and then then we must accept that there are, are other ways to do it. And hopefully give room. If we give room for, okay, if you have a church where you have both type of music, we'll give some room, but they also need to give some room. We need to come that, find that coexistence. Um, yes, I know it sounds very simple uh, and it's easier said than done, but uh, but some of the greatest truths are maybe all, very, in fact, very uncomplex hmm. on the surface and in, in their essence. Mm. at the same times, but very much easier said than done. But right. let's strive for excellence. Let's let's do that. Yeah, striving for excellence and then starting to uh, have a certain level of respect and understanding for others and not uh, immediately questioning their intentions. I think mm. that can be a part of having discussions and start to learn why we are doing uh, what we are doing. And also understand that it's, uh, there's not all churches that has room to have both styles in its pure form. And that is not necessarily what we are talking about here, that we're going to have this multicultural society in, in each church. That That's not what we're talking about here. But what we are talking about, that there are certain principles behind the intentions of both music. For example, mm. some music is there to really heighten the uh, experience, the emotional experience of the music. Other ones is to reflect God in his beauty and his majesty, for example. If we can, for example, combine these two, that the most music is both emotional and experiential and both has aspects of it during, you know, at least during a month that you have been able to make music excellent enough to to reflect that majesty, that type of elevating, not the earthbound more view, the human side of Jesus, but that you can, you know, his lordship and all of that. And um, so if we're, we're able to look at the principle behind here, then when we are composing new beautiful music, and I hope we will see a lot of that also in the, in the churches, there's no reason why the Holy Spirit wouldn't uh, inspire new beautiful music so people can be a part of that work, uh, that we remember these principles of what uh, the, the Word teaches and what people need. Uh, let's go into a close here now. I know um, you have some different services for musicians and uh, I would encourage people to be open to uh, to encourage uh, 
uh, Christian musicians that are making new music and um, be open to including that in some way, also in your churches, but also in your your uh, evangelistical more initiatives. Uh, but Frederick, uh, how can people get in contact with your services? Well, the best way and the easiest way is to start with my uh, uh, personal website, which is uh, maule, M-A-G-L-E dot D-K. And from there, uh, there's both contact, direct contact form, and there is a, a, a web shop where you can buy my sheet music, a lot of it. I'm in the process of publishing my entire back catalog um, on my new publishing house. And uh, there is uh, uh, there's even a music forum, and there are obviously also links to my social web presence on Facebook and Instagram, uh, Instagram and YouTube, etc., uh, Spotify and so on. So that would be a good starting point. Uh, and then don't hesitate to reach out to my to me directly. Uh, I. Uh, um, can be sometimes terribly slow at replying, but trust me, it is not of ill will, and I will <laughs> eventually. Uh, so if you uh, have a little patience, uh, uh, absolutely do not hesitate to contact me directly also. Thank you very much. Uh, so again, that the web address is uh, M-A-G-L-E, Magle, or Magle in English, uh, and then D-K, uh, like they do in Denmark. So... Thank you very much, everyone, for Thank listening you. to this and having a general interest. Frederick, I'm so grateful that you can be with us here today and represent your perspectives as a, a highly experienced musician and, and church leader. And uh, I hope that everyone here would consider uh, the principles we have learned here today so we can come together and glorify God more fully. So... Uh, for those who are listening, remember that we are on Instagram, we're on YouTube and all different podcast directories. So you can then engage with us and we want your comments in the comments sections. We want to have a conversation together here. So please don't hesitate to leave your thoughts. So with that, have a beautiful day.